Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's uh, been a while since I've done anything with the old Ford here. Uh, September 25th already. This thing's basically sat here not doing anything all summer. Um, got that power steering issue, which is what stopped me from being able to really use it. And since I hadn't gotten around to working on that, we've been busy. So decided to uh, hold off on everything else. Well, I decided earlier this week since it had been a while since I did anything, that I would come over and at least start it up. And, uh, you know, I got that clutch unstuck. That was like the last thing I did. And I wanted to make sure that I occasionally move it, keep that from happening again. Not that I, I think it takes years of sitting for that to happen. Anywho, I started it up. It started pretty easily, but I could tell it didn't sound right. It sounded like it was missing. Uh, like not all the cylinders were firing and then it died and I was able to restart it but it only ran a little bit again not running 100% and then died again then I couldn't start it at all and when I was cranking it I noticed no smoke was coming out of the stack so I figure it's a fuel delivery issue uh, I figure one of the things that I had planned to do almost like right away on this thing and never got around to doing, not horrible bad that I didn't do it right away because it's not like I've been running the tractor, the fuel filter and an oil change. So when I started it the other day, my intention was to try and just limp it up into the yard, even with the bad power steering, change the filters, change the oil, and uh, then try and isolate the location of that power steering leak and figure out what I was going to need to get to fix that. But now I got to see if I can get it restarted. So I guess I'll try and start it right now just for the heck of it to see if anything changed with it just sitting here. <laughs> And if you think I didn't crank it long enough, that ain't it. Because it's not cold out here at all. It's a beautiful day. And uh, this thing has been starting a lot easier than that. We've got the fuel tank. We've got a fuel shutoff valve, which it now occurs to me. I remember now I did have a problem with this. And I was wondering, why does it keep turning and it never stops turning? So for some reason, mine just spins round and round. So the fuel comes out of the tank through the shutoff valve, travels through this line over here over to this pump right here which acts as a lift pump lifts the fuel into and through the fuel filter at which point it exits the fuel filter and goes into the injector pump so i think the first thing i want to do is i want to drain off what is in that fuel filter all right so periodically over time condensation will collect in the fuel system and it'll build up in the bottom of the fuel filter canister here. So they put a drain on the bottom here and uh, you're supposed to periodically just drain off fuel until you don't see any water coming out. So who knows when the last time that was done. I also don't know what's in the bottom of that tank. There's also a strange setup here for the, for the drain. On the bottom of the canister here, they got a uh, I can tell you right now, I got the wrong filter too. I already got the fuel filter, knowing I wanted to change it. I'm looking at this fuel filter and I'm thinking, this looks a lot bigger than what they gave me. All right, I'm not gonna worry about that right just yet. So we got a hose clamp holding on a little short hunk of hose onto the bottom of the fuel filter. And then, got another hose clamp that looks like it might actually just be holding this piece in here which I thought was just a bolt or a carriage bolt but it's actually something else because because the head of it turns separate from whatever the heck that is that's in there well that looks like it screws into a fitting no that's a bolt that's just a regular bolt that somebody screwed into the uh, into the hose All right, where's my jar I've got a five gallon pail off screen here just in case I uh, need it, but mainly want to catch this stuff to get a good look at. Okay, there's nothing coming out of there. All right, interesting. Let's pop this hose off the bottom. 
the heck? This is an interesting bolt. It's like a trim bolt. It's got like a, it's like a carriage bolt with a uh, with a chrome cover or something on it. I wonder if that belongs on this somewhere else, or if that's just something he had. All right, so nothing's coming out of here. So this nut right on the top here, uh, this is actually a, a screw. It's a bleeder. It's supposed to be able to crack this open to bleed air out of the system. If you uh, like run out of fuel and you need to get the air out of the system, or if you put a new filter on and you want this to fill up and the air has to have some place to go. Uh, there were two filters that came up as possible replacements for this tractor according to the Napa cross reference. And one of them is a cartridge type filter that is smaller in diameter and a little bit taller I think than this. The other one looked like a spin-on filter so I didn't think that this was, I thought this was a canister but now that I look at it I see writing on the side here this might be a, a spin-on filter or a uh, what I mean is a filter that actually has its own housing integral to the to the filter itself. So I'm going to open this bleeder. All right, well, fuel's coming out if I open the bleeder. So I'm going to have to drop this filter off to see what's going on inside there. And then, if I'm lucky, that fuel shutoff will work on that thing, on the bottom of that tank. Oh yeah, why would that be the same size? That'd be too easy. Break that free. Now I got fuel flowing. I'm gonna turn this valve underneath this tank to see if I can get it to stop. That doesn't want to turn. That just feels like it's gonna break. Well, much to my dismay, no amount of turning this valve. I, get, I was able to finally get this valve turning again on the bottom of the tank here, and no amount of turning this valve seems to stop the flow from this filter. So this valve is not doing its job. Yeah, it's like, it doesn't matter what position I put this valve in, I could just keep turning it and turning it and turning it, and it won't shut down. It's also leaking a little bit of fuel, so I am gonna have to replace that valve on the bottom of the tank. So it looks like I got no choice but to drain off all of the fuel. Oh. Oh yeah, this bottom cover. See a lot of corrosion in there. AKA rust. I'll show you the horror show that's in there in a minute. Oh, stuck on there. So, see this this outer metal part is not a canister, it's actually the housing. It's like sludge. It's like mud almost in there. Not good at all. All right. All right. That could be the whole problem right there. Oh, I ripped my glove. I hate that. Go through the trouble of putting the glove on and avoid getting diesel all over your skin. You don't work out too well. So I'll just let that drain. In the meantime, witness the uh, horrors that are in this uh, bottom of this filter housing so it's uh, thick and chunky so that drain port I think is just completely clogged oh it's taking a long time for this to drain so I can start to open up this line here in the bottom of the lift pump the fuel comes over directly from the tank through this line that comes down behind the pump right into the bottom of this lift pump then it comes out of the lift pump goes through the fuel filter, goes out that line in the back, which basically does a uh, 180 and comes right back in and enters the injector pump right here. There's also a second line here, which I think is a return line to the tank, because that comes up way up here. I'm not really crazy about the look and the smell of this diesel that's in here. It smells more like kerosene. Don't forget the tank wasn't empty when I bought the machine. I just added fuel to what was in there. Well, the good news is the uh, housing actually cleaned up pretty nicely. You know, as I was sitting here watching this orange fuel leak out, it suddenly dawned on me. I wonder if this is number two fuel oil. 
home heating oil. Some guys try and use it in uh, off-road diesels. You're not supposed to use it on highway. It's not for highway use. So what the government does is they dye it with a red dye. And that way, if they want to check a semi, you know, a big truck on the highway, and make you know to see whether or not he's compliant, they can dip a stick in his tank and see if it comes up with that red color. Well, it occurs to me, I put in diesel, which our local blend of diesel around here has kind of a greenish tinge to it. Uh, so I was thinking, well, maybe that mixed with the red, and red and green kind of gives you an orange, right? Maybe that's what I'm looking at, I don't know. Well, I think the tank's finally drained, or at least drained low enough that I can take that shutoff valve off and see what's going on. Well, that tank didn't look so full to me, but uh, I'll tell you, uh, I filled up this waste can, this can, and that bucket, so there was like 15 gallons of fuel left in that tank. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off this temporary uh, shelf thing because it's kind of in my way to get to that valve on the bottom there. Just as I suspected, these uh, these bolts were plenty tight. What about my bring? my big breaker bar out. Ugh. Pretty much just as I suspected, this isn't just a uh, fitting that screws into the bottom of the tank. It actually has this section here that sticks up into the tank. And this, underneath all of this garbage that's on here, it's probably a screen. So this acts as like a primary filter. So what I should try and do is see whether or not there's any way I can fix this valve. It's made to come apart. There's a clip right here. Looks like there's a clip right here you pop out and that would allow this whole section to come out. So maybe there's a seal in here that could be replaced. It's interesting to me that this just turns and turns and never shuts off. All right, so here it is. Here's what the shutoff valve looks like. We've got this plastic assembly with a screen uh, I cleaned it up. This was really filthy. This was so dirty you couldn't even see that there was a screen here. And uh, the body was really dirty too. I scrubbed that pretty well. This is plastic, this wing nut. Um, so, you know, if anybody thinks this is a aftermarket replacement somebody put in this tractor because of the plastic parts, wrong. It's got a genuine Ford emblem embossed right on it see it right here there are also numbers stamped in right here 08 space 73 well my tractor is a 74 so it's completely conceivable that this part was manufactured in 73 near the end of the 73 run and that uh, it was put into a tractor that was maybe born early in 74 or it was going down the line in 73 and was a 74 model year whatever this is the original valve so it turns out this is a pretty common valve. There are plenty of places to source this. There's Tisco, there's aftermarket online through eBay and Amazon, yada, yada, yada. And then there's the original uh, New Holland part. So I've uh, been reading a lot of debate online about these. A lot of people are buying new ones of these, putting them in only to have them leak right away. Another complaint from a lot of people is that you just turn it, it just turns and turns and turns like mine does. So when I had this in the parts cleaner and I was cleaning this up, I took the hose from the parts cleaner and I put, held it right over here and expected to be able to back flush out this screen. And I was surprised at how much resistance I was getting trying to put fluid in here, no matter what position I had this in. The other thing that's interesting to me is I see threads, what look like threads right here, exposed. I'm wondering if this whole valve is pushed out. That might explain why it doesn't shut off. Maybe this is somehow managed to get past this clip that holds it in. See how the uh, see how the clip, the ends of the clip are not showing, almost as if like somebody popped this up. I think this is supposed to push down. I think somebody had this out. I mean, it would be great if there was just some sort of a seal inside here that could be replaced, and if I could repair this existing valve. 
because it is, again it's an original Ford part if I buy the cheap aftermarket one which by the way can be had for as little as like twelve dollars and like twelve to eighteen dollars on average the one on Amazon is thirty dollars and has a brass uh, this handle is brass but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's going to be a good quality part either that's really it's really in there so my theory is that this retaining clip is supposed to actually close down around this skinnier area right here that all of this area of thread that's exposed right here that that's not supposed to be showing that that's supposed to be in here and that somehow maybe somebody didn't have this and somebody had this apart didn't insert this all the way and then force the clip in this worst case scenario is I break it Did that clip just come out or did it break it? No, the clip came out. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty convinced that I'm right about this. Because look how far I was able to get this to go in. And I could see that the design of this thing is this is threaded. And when this gets screwed in, this point closes down on a seat in there the problem is I can't screw this in far enough to get it to seat fully and stop flow because when somebody put this in and they didn't have it all the way in they forced this clip in and what they did is they literally clipped it right over this threaded area and then from just probably turning this while that clip was being forced onto those threads, it completely damaged these threads. This whole area right here is supposed to be threads. There's an O-ring right here that can be replaced. That's probably responsible for stopping it from leaking out through the handle area. But it's, that's unfortunate that I'm not gonna be able to save that one because like I said, it's an original part. I hate to... Uh, hate to buy the aftermarket one but that's going to be a lot quicker my local Napa Auto Parts actually shows that it has a replacement for this in stock for fifteen dollars and fifty cents plus tax and the picture it looks very similar to this right down to the way that it has a clip here that clips in to hold this in so I think it's uh, I think it's a no-brainer we're gonna go with that well, guys, so uh, Napa came through for me on this um, fuel shut off. Um, what's interesting is on the Napa website, when I um, searched for, I put in a 1974 Ford tractor, and I searched for fuel shut offs, I specified that it was a diesel engine, and this is the only choice that came up. And it looks like it would be the correct one. It's interesting. It shows a plastic knob, and, uh, you know, that's what it looks like. And then down here... It's got a part number BK and then the space S65286. So the actual part number is an S252, I'm sorry, S65286. BK means that it's Ball Camp, which is the manufacturer, and uh, 1549 each. But what's funny is they ordered it for me and it came in, and what came in is this. It's an S65286 Ford fuel tap. But what I'm noticing is it's not ball camp. It's actually, it says Sparex. S-P-A-R-E-X. Sparex, I guess? Sparex. Um, so that's the first thing that I thought was interesting is that it's not the same manufacturer even though it's the same part number. And then the other thing that's interesting to me is this one actually has a metal knob. So, go figure. So what's the deal with this? This just pushes on? Well, that seems kind of iffy, huh? <laughs> just pushes on there. Of course, it's just plastic, so i got to be careful not to break it. So if that just pushes on, I wonder if this one just pulls off. <laughs> I don't think so. All right. So in the meantime, while I was waiting for that uh, shutoff to come in, I 
threaded in a uh, reducer bushing and a pipe nipple and an elbow and another pipe nipple and was able to, uh, with a barb fitting on it, was able to hook on this piece of hose. And what I did was I took some of that uh, diesel that I drained off, the heavy stuff settled in the bottoms of the buckets. I took some of the fairly clean diesel that was in there and I just used that to wash down the inside of the tank. So I just kept flushing that diesel through and basically by having that old shutoff valve out, instead of this screen sticking up into the tank, now it was just an open hole so any stuff in the bottom of the tank hopefully will be washed out instead of clogging my new screen. And then uh, last thing I did before I quit was I just draped the hose up and this much more still came out actually. So just going to drain this little bit off. Now I'm going to take that fitting off the bottom there and I'm going to put the new shutoff valve in. So I'm out there and it's starting to get dark and I'm trying to get this uh, new part screwed in and for the life of me it won't start. It goes like half a turn and then stops and I can see it's crooked. It keeps wanting to cross thread. And I'm like, well, I know if I force it, I'm going to damage the threads in the bottom of the tank. And then I'm really going to be in a pickle because uh, to fix that, I'm going to probably end up having to take the tank out, which I didn't want to have to do. So I didn't, wisely, I decided not to force it. I took the Teflon tape off and it still wouldn't go in. I thought maybe I had too much Teflon tape on there, but I kind of doubted it. So sure enough... I look at it on the magnification and I could see that when the machine that made this piece of crap formed the threads, it had some kind of a malfunction and created a double thread at the beginning. So like from this side, it actually doesn't look too bad. But right there at the top, hopefully that's showing up, but there's a double lip there something something bad happened there I don't know this is if these are form threads or if they're single point cut or what the heck but something's very wrong with these so now I got to go return this one and of course since I waited for them to get this one from the warehouse they're not gonna have another one in the store and if they don't have another one in the warehouse <laughs> then I'm gonna be delayed even further uh, not a happy camper at all. And I can't use this, the guts on this, to fix this because it's a different design. This actually has a completely different uh, deal here, the way it's put together. There's no clip to speak of. Oh, well. And in case you thought it's because it's a cheap Chinese part, it's actually made in Turkey. <laughs> oh, well. So I've got my new shutoff valve installed. No leaks there. I've got it in the off position because I still haven't installed my new filter. Just for the heck of it, I checked the flow through here and uh, it seems much better. And I'm not surprised. That screen looked horrible. I think that screen was so badly clogged with sediment that uh, that was uh, part of my issue. And then of course the condition of that filter was pretty horrible too. So now I'm going to uh, take out these two bolts right here so I can move this filter housing out. Some of you guys are probably thinking, hey, you don't have to do that to change the filter on that thing. You're right, sort of. The reason why I'm doing this is because the manifold is in the way of removing this bolt. And there is an O-ring right here. And the new filter comes with a new O-ring. So if I don't unbolt this to move this out of the way to take that bolt all the way off I can't put the new o-ring on there and I might end up with a small leak which I don't want the other thing I did was I cleaned as much rust as possible off of the inside of my cap and the filler neck and then I actually coated the inside of the cap with <laughs> of all things chain lube which might sound crazy but the chain lube sticks really nicely and that coating of grease should help inhibit any uh, future rust growth from any future rust buildup from condensation. Might not have to take these all the way out. I might be able to just tilt it out enough to get that 
now. All right, so I was able to get that out just far enough so that I can get the bolt out. And there is that little O-ring I was talking about, right there. Now there are two O-rings or gaskets in the uh, top part of the housing. There's this O-ring on the inside here. And then there's the larger O-ring. It's more like a square cut gasket. This tip is junk on this thing. If anybody's wondering what I'm using for a filter, I'm using a Napa Gold Series. 3166. Last time I checked these were made by Wix, which is a good quality filter. Um, this is what Napa shows as the correct filter for this particular application on the Ford 5000. There is another version of the injector pump that has two fuel filters, one after the other, a primary and a secondary. If you have that set up, you probably have different fil a different filter. So the filter actually is clearly marked on the side what side faces up. It's interesting, it actually says, they're calling, they're actually calling this part here the base. So I guess in some applications this might be upside down. But all you need to know is that this side right here is the side that faces up. Because this lip right here is what this is going to seal against when we put that proper um, Replacement gasket in. So it's actually such a tight fit that the, it'll stay on there. It doesn't really matter which way this is facing when you install it, but I like putting it so that the fuel filter number is facing out. That way, when I decide it's time to replace the filter again, if I can't remember what it is, I can just take a quick glance and go, oh yeah, got to get me another 3166. This new filter came in a, with a plastic bag that had all the O-rings and gaskets in it. And it actually came with three of these gaskets. Now, I don't know whether or not that's because they used that gasket set for other filters and there might be one that uses three. Seems kind of odd. Maybe there's even an application where they stack the two filters on top, two, two of these on top of each other. That's the only thing I could think of, but anywho, uh, if anybody knows what that extra gasket's for, maybe it's a, it's a, you know, hey, you accidentally pinched one and messed it up. So they give you an extra one for free. Now that I've got everything put back together, I'm gonna leave the bleeding, the bleeder screw on the top out. I'm gonna open up the valve on the bottom of the tank. Over here on the front of the injector pump we have the lift pump. The lift pump has this lever spring loaded on the side. This is actually a priming valve or a priming lever. And what you do is you pump this It doesn't feel like this lever is doing anything after a while. You may have to bump the engine over a little bit because there's a cam inside there that actually actuates this diaphragm pump. And if it happens to be stopped in the exact position where it's out the furthest, then this lever won't really have any action. Well, that's odd. 